We've been hunting 15 minutes. Here we go. Hard work. Hard work pays off. It's a bow hunter's dream. All day action. It's a cougar. <laughs> the gray ghost was in the shadows. These things are tanks, man. Look at this tree. I truly appreciate this opportunity. Very blessed. I've never even seen a golden water bee. Kudu's layer. Living a life right here in Africa. I can honestly say that I was not expecting to kill a zebra on this adventure. Kevin, come for lives here in South Africa. Beautiful, beautiful, big sable. Thank you so much, brother. Take work. There's still daylight. <laughs> we still got two hours. Today, it was the most memorable day of bow hunting in my entire life. Oh. We'll be going for crocodile. Wait for the sun to come up and see if we can get a nice frog. All right. Game on. That was the first sighting of a crocodile. That was exciting. Man, this right here. It's my first bow kill in Africa. Oh, this is ginormous. This is crazy. This is, like, absolutely insane. <laughs> well done. What have done? The last morning. Last morning. We, we actually get on a plane today, headed home. Well, I am at the airport in Oklahoma City, about to head to Atlanta. We'll meet up with Brian, Mandy, and JC. And then we're off to Africa. We have a lot of flying ahead of us, 18 hours of actual fly time. And then it's actually seven hours from Johannesburg to there, but we're staying overnight. So it's gonna be like 40 hours before we're actually at the property. But I'm pumped. John, hey, where are we going? We're going to eat. <laughs> no, you see where his head's at? We're going to Africa. And Mandy back there is just along for the ride. And she's also hungry. Yeah. we kind of sit next to each other. Hi, my name is Brandon Adams, and I'm going to be documenting a trip that I was fortunate enough to take to South Africa with a couple buddies of mine, John Christopher and Brian Berkeley. John brought his wife along, Miss Mandy. We're going to be visiting sandstone safaris, and we are all very eager for this adventure. Hi, JC. What are we doing? We're here. We're in South Africa. We got Mandy. Hey, May May. Hi. <laughs> Brian is waiting on his back. Hopefully, it comes in. Firmly, like. How many hours into this trip? A lot. 25. But we're leaving kind of like the holding area, the Athlon House yes. in Johannesburg. About to head to the property right now. I'm ready. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I keep, I keep wanting to like grab the wheel. We are about to hit the van to the property. We'll be hunting this evening, right? Because he's going to have a stack this high shortly. <laughs> Well, to sum up getting there, we all had over 18 hours of fly time just to get to Johannesburg. Then we had an overnight stay. Then we had about a seven hour drive to the property. Overall, we had about 43 hours of travel. So coming into that driveway was a very welcome sight for all of us. And especially seeing those huge baobab trees because a bunch of redneck Americans like us, we don't have those at home. Front door service. Now, this will kill. The 
So in camp is going to be myself and then my business partner, John Christopher. Him and I have a hunting television show called My World Outdoors, as well as a bunch of online content avenues that we disperse like a lot of outdoor content. He also brought his wife, Mandy, who puts up with him and his antics and mine as well whenever I happen to be around. Hey. This is ridiculous. I messed up. And then my buddy, Brian Berkeley, who tagged along almost on a whim. And I'm very glad that he did because he and I have shared a lot of camps as of late and we always have a good time when we're together. And then we start to meet the rest of the crew. Rion is a professional hunter who will be spending most of his time with John and I. He's a co-owner of Sandstone Safaris with Tillman, who's his business partner and who is also a PH. Gerard is another PH in camp who will be spending most of his time with Brian throughout the week. Justice, who's been a tracker for 12 years. Judas, who's been a tracker for seven years. And Kenny, the camp cook, who's been at Sandstone for two years. Hi, I'm Rian Furi, co-owner of Sandstone Safaris in South Africa. Yeah, I've been living in, in close to Messina uh, for the last 15 years. I have a wife, two boys, 14 and eight years old. I got my license in 1997 and uh, I did a lot of freelancing for other companies, hunted for them for years. And then in 2015, Tillman and I started Sandstone Safaris as a business together. Yeah, and it's been seven years and growing. Sandstone started with a little idea. Tillman and I drove past here. It was just bush here. There was nothing here. We drove past here with other clients and we stopped here and looked at the magnificent tree in front here. And Tillman said to me, don't you think we must build a lodge here? Yeah, and that's where the little seed was planted. We started building this lodge from scratch. There was nothing, just bush here. Yeah, most of the clients come over here and don't expect all the facilities we have and all the comfort and luxuries we have. Yeah, and they come as clients and leave as friends. Okay, this is our main lodge where the dining area is where we eat at night, lunch, breakfast. Right here, TV room on this side. The guys want to relax, watch some TV in the afternoon for lunchtime. Kitchen is right that side. Okay, this is the, the baobab. The old lodge originated with this baobab. We saw this and we arranged the lodge to be around this center point is the, the baobab. We have paths around it that goes to every room. Our rooms are numbered from number one to number six over there. As you can see, they all have a nice porch on the front to sit, relax. Now, as you come out of your rooms, the pathways all lead to the main lodge or the fire pit where we sit in the evening around the fire and share all our hunting stories of the day. Chairs are arranged around it with the barbecue area at the back where the chef prepares the food. Yeah, nice luxurious with a bar area on that side and a close by bathroom. Yeah, our rooms are situated, the old lodge on this side. If you go down, we've got a path down to the skinning shed. Our skinning shed is down there where all your trophies will be skinned and the meat will be put in the cold room and the skins being salted and processed and taken to the taxidermy from there. It's a pretty big tree. I think I could uh, put a lock on about, yeah, about right there. <laughs> put a lock on. If you put your lock on here, you could even see around the side of it, the tree. <laughs> All right, guys, so we're going right now. We got us both loaded up. Right, uh, BB's in the back back there. BA and me are up here. Uh, we're going to sight in some rifles and then just ride the road and try to see what we can get on real quick before the night ends. We got about two hours and I'm really fired up. We just pulled out of the camp and I swear there was 20 monkeys just jumping out of trees.
Uh, we just set in the rifles, check that everything is fine. So we're going out now, drive around, see if we can find something. Maybe take a walk. Yeah, see what the afternoon brings. When we're driving around, if we see an animal, you'll have between three and five seconds. Oh, okay. that's what you'll have. Perfect. Okay. I like it. Three to five seconds. Quick draw. <laughs> The first evening we're going to be spent driving around, which this is a very common hunting method in South Africa. It allows you to cover a lot of ground and then also raises you up above the ground, above the brush uh, for better shot opportunities. We're going to end a very long day of travel with a half day of seeing a lot of terrain from the high rack and then wake up in the morning and go from there. It is morning one here in South Africa. We are in South Africa. We're in freaking South Africa right now. We are. We are there. excited. We went out last night. I filmed JC. You went in a different truck. Uh, we seen a lot of animals, but then. Didn't pull, the trigger. Didn't pull the trigger. This morning, we're splitting up. They're going to be gone all day. We don't know where they're going to be. They're going to be on their own adventure. They and JC's going to the gonna... border of Zimbabwe. You're going to be riding the border of Zimbabwe, which is freaking crazy. It just sounds awesome on the border it of really Zimbabwe. It really does. Or Botswana. Was it Botswana or Zimbabwe? Botswana and Zimbabwe. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it's like a... Yeah, we're right in the corner of... We're in the very northeast corner of South Africa. But we're catching uh, a few moments here to eat breakfast. And I'm about to hit the, hit the road, so... Show them all the critters we're about to kill. This place is beautiful. 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 Morning, guys. No, this morning we're going out. Brian and Gerard will go about an hour's drive from here. Look for golden wildebeest, eland, kudu, wildebeest, zebra. And we're going to a different place, about 20 minutes drive. And see what we can get, anything that's on the list. All right, guys, so we're here. First morning hunt. Just got loaded up. We're going to do a little gun hunting this morning. Whatever walks out is going to feel the wrath of this 308, I promise you. Party time. Whatever comes out now, we'll see what happens. I like Hopefully it. Hopefully the bullets fly straight. <laughs> right off the bat in the first morning, we got out and started steel hunting on foot. About. So very quickly into the walk, like within a hundred yards, uh, we spotted this big Impala Ram. And unfortunately for me, the man running the camera, I did not capture the actual kill shot on camera. So that was not the ideal way for me to start out the hunt, you know, being the guy that's actually filming the hunt. Uh, but I was able to capture everything around it. One down, baby. My first African animal right there. Well done, very good smell. Thank you. I am so excited right now, man. This is my first African animal. And it's a jam up stud impala. My first South African animal. I cannot explain that enough how excited I am. Quick, fast, in a hurry. Me and BA, this knock it out. See, because Alan was telling us when they die, they fall like inside their cell. Just disintegrate, like very soft. Yeah, that's what he said. 80% water, if they die, they, they'll be like a dump in the ground, like a little bit of a hole. After a few months, there's nothing left of them. Wow, okay. So after we got the Impala, we kept driving around and occasionally we'd get out for some spot and stalks. And actually we had this really great encounter with these two female Gims buck. But unfortunately on this property, we weren't allowed to shoot females. And so uh, we had to let them go. Trust me, JC would have been happy with uh, either one of these. All right, so we're in here. We're, I mean, that right there is beautiful. Wide open spot, a lot of Elon, a lot of kudu around here. We just saw two female kudus right there. There they go, right there. Uh, they, 
This right here looks like a killing spot. As Mississippi, we say killing tree. This is a killing spot. I'm ready. Yeah. We'll shoot. But we pack a nice, yeah. nice lunch box. It's an all day, all day. I'm game for that. Uh, we continued to drive around and get out periodically for spot and stocks. And eventually, while we were driving around, we caught up with this big kudu from the truck. Big, big kudu. That's what I'm talking about, right there. Y'all sit in the middle of the road. No wonder he called the ghost. He was, he, I couldn't see. I could not see. I was like, huh? Y'all sit in the middle of the road. I'm like, okay. Right there, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Very nice. Well done. Yes. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Well done, John. Good Thank job. you so much, right? Oh man, I tell you. Good shooting. In that side, out this side. Yeah, big boom. Very nice. Wow. Way up. Good job. Well done, John. Crazy. I mean, you were like, there he is, big kudu. And I was like, where? Yeah, if you look at the bodies on them, the gray bodies, and he was standing in that shadow. In the shadows. You couldn't it's... see him very nicely. I just saw the shine of the wounds a little bit in the sun and then I saw him standing there and you made an excellent perfect shot probably over 200 yards. It's, uh, I don't know how far it was but I know when y'all said he was in the middle of the road I put the scope up and that's the only reason I saw him because I did not see. <laughs> I'm not even gonna sit there and the kid gray you. Ghost. The gray ghost was in the shadows. Man I tell you beautiful animal. Oh great shot. Beautiful shot. I really man. appreciate it. Well done sir. Thank you. And this one is a really exceptional good kudu, probably around 53, 52. Very good kudu. The gray ghost. Gray ghost down. So now with the starts, we'll take some pictures. And then the work starts, we're gonna chop a road in here. It's about a 60, 70 yards in thick bush. We have to chop a road and then load and see what else we can find. Plenty more. Day is still early. Yes, yes. I cannot be more happy with that. I mean, it's unbelievable. So where we're from in this particular instance, we would actually quarter the animal and carry the quarters, the 60 or 70 yards to the road where the truck would be parked. But over in South Africa, they actually chop out a road to the down animal where we're able to use a winch to load it into the back of the truck fully intact, where we can take it back to the skin and shed to be processed. So after we got the kudu loaded up, uh, we continued to drive around until dark and we did get out for a spot and stock right there at last light. And again, we walked up on a couple of big female gimsbuck and unfortunately we couldn't shoot them because we were on the same property where we were not allowed to shoot females. So by that time it was sunset and we began to head back to camp. And one of the absolute best parts of the Africa adventure was the campfire and sharing stories. Uh, we got to reconnect with Brian and Gerard and hear about their day. Plus, they had a camera, so we got to see bits of it as well. It was like he knew, like he heard me. Another girl coming out from the right, you see her. He's standing to the right of the road. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Already did too. Shoot. Shoot. Day two on the uh, Africa trip. We went after uh, the kudu this morning and a bunch of cows came across and uh, I went ahead and got ready and clicked the safety off just in case there was a big bull behind. And uh, sure enough, he poked his head out and as soon as he hit the road, he took off, jumped the fence and I was able to squeeze one off right as he was jumping. This is a, 
a beautiful animal. Obviously, this is the animal that uh, most people come here to to uh, to try to kill, and uh, this is a great representative. I'm thinking, but low 50s, uh, just once in a lifetime hunt. I'll never forget it. And then, and then we we chase Elon the rest of the day. Yeah. Then, then what know. else did you see? Giraffe. I mean, we saw every. We saw uh, big uh, buffalo. Yeah. 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 You didn't <clears throat> shoot it. I mean, he, they weren't big enough. No, they weren't big enough. But they. Yeah, just but they still have to soft. Be the stool. Gotcha. I mean, they looked really big. Dead as a doornail. Standing quarter in the wood, huh? Shooting right on the shoulder. Bullet out there. Up there Perfect. He took it. He took yeah, it. Yeah, but it took some chopping there. Yeah. Those mupanis are like this. Fine, fine. is ready. Awesome. Yes. On the starter, we have stuffed avocado. Ooh. Nice. Yeah. I love avocado. In course, stew from Impala. Mm -hmm. Yes. Rice, also salad, mm -hmm. and some sweet bun. Like, I like all You're that. You're speaking sexy to me. I like yeah. that. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Kenny. Thanks, Thanks Kenny. Like Good. What are we doing today? Uh, going out. I think we're gonna start there by one of the waters, look for Elon tracks, find some nice fresh Elon tracks, and go for them. See if we can find a nice big Elon bull. Alright guys, so we're loaded up, getting ready, getting the guns ready. Things go back to we were on the same farm we were yesterday, going after Elon, another kudu, a Gims buck, another kudu, another kudu, uh, and an Elon and a Gims buck, man. We're really back on this place. I feel real good. The temperature has dropped drastically. But here we go, we're loading up now, got the guns ready. And we're gonna be on them. Right, so we've been, there's a lot of spot right up here that the gas box have been. So we're facing to do a little spot and stalk, see if we can get on them. Yeah, we just took a nice walk now. Um, Saw some Impala, Gemsma. Unfortunately, couldn't get a shot, but we're going to drive and see the open spaces, talk on them, and find the big Elon tracks. That's take what I'm it, talking The about. wind is picking up nicely now, it's blowing in one direction. Yep. So we'll take it from there, see what we can get. Sounds good. Game plan. So we were actually switching areas, going to another spot, looking for Elon or Gim's buck, because that was honestly the main objective for the day. And on our way, we spotted a big group of blue wildebeest, and we were getting out of the truck and about to make a stock, and they actually ran up the road right at us, and John was able to get a shot off right there in front of the truck. So these things right here are tanks. Yeah, this is what we call the poor man's buffalo. Yes. Well, he's a he's an absolute well, beauty. I can't thank you enough. The result came out well. Absolutely. Congratulations. Thank you. Well done. Wow. This nice mane. That's huh? beautiful mane. Oh my gosh. The colors and the stripes on it. This is sin glands, they rub against the stuff. Look at that coming out there. It's the sin markings. And now this is, the, this is the, the blue. The blue wildebeest, and because that's why they call it the brindled gnu. Right. With the, with the brindles, the stripes on it. Especially when they're out in the sun like this, you can see them clearly. A beautiful long tail too. Yeah. 
Well, now you have the blue. We can get the golden one. We're going to get the golden one. I've already made my mom. I might get two of them. So we got the Willoughby's loaded up in the truck, and we spent the rest of the day riding around in the high rack. Justice and Rian were trying to cut the tracks of this Elin. And at one point we actually got set up in the middle of the road for them to cross and they, and they crossed about, I don't know, five or 600 yards down the road. So we tried to circle the truck to get in front of them and actually we met them as they were crossing the road going about a hundred miles an hour. And of course it was too quick for a shot. So we were heading to a new area trying to cut off the eland that we had just been on and we ran into a herd of impala with one big ram in it and frankly we're easily sidetracked so john pulled out the gun and made a great shot in a very very tight window All right, guys, so we got, we were had a pretty slow evening so far. We were just driving around, not seeing a lot. We ran up on this huge herd of impalas. And Rice said, there's a good one in there. He's like, you want to shoot it? No questions asked. And we had a tight, I mean, it was a quick shot. Very quick. Through some brush. There's a gap for him where you take the shot. Perfect shot. And Rye, Rye told me he was going to whistle. And when he whistled, I was just on, sitting there waiting. I had a bunch of does in front of him, or ewes. And uh, made a good shot. Got him down. Perfect. Two impalas. Blew his heart out. Well yes. done. Thank good you. Job, John. Thank you. Right at last light again, we tried to go on a little walkabout and try to catch up with some Gims buck. And again, we caught up with a bunch of females. We stalked up on this open area now. We found some Gims buck, but they all females. All three of them feeding right there. About 800 yards from us. Frustrating. So our day was over and we went back to camp to catch back up with Brian. And luckily Brian had a camera with him. So we was able to share all of his experiences through his eyes from his camera from that day. What how was the experience, Brian? Fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everything happened fast, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but man, good job. Is... You got a beautiful golden wildebeest. Thank yeah. you, man. This is a uh, an awesome animal. Very blessed. I've never even seen a golden wildebeest. So here we are at the um, Brian's zebra. Trackers tracked him the whole day. Eventually, we got him. Brian make a good shot on him. Good shot running. Yes, the trackers, the guy that helped him. There's yeah. Justice, he's also helping. Very good <laughs> job, guys. Good Thank you. you. And the zebra. Let the lead fly. I got lucky and hit him on the, on the first shot. So, dropped him in his tracks. Good job, Brian. No pressure at all. Walks in tomorrow. Yeah, that's a shooter. Okay. Oh, thanks, Brian. Well, Charles, set up. Well, in 10 minutes, I already killed it. As soon as daylight cracked, <laughs> Buffalo stood up and BAM! He's just sitting there waiting on him. Like... Living in life right here in Africa. You know, shooting stuff. These guys are amazing. I mean, look at how the food <laughs> over here cooking steaks. We couldn't. It couldn't be any better. 
For water better see for Lord, make us truly thankful. Please bless the fruit of our bodies. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Enjoy. Third morning here at Sandstone. Uh, getting everything ready. We normally get up at this time, get up around daylight, eat breakfast, and then start venturing our way toward the properties uh, and then start hunting. Today we're going to a new new place about two hours from here and we'll actually be spending all day in the field. Uh, I think midday we're going to be posted up in a blind eating lunch. So I am excited. We're getting things gathered uh, and ready for the day. And soon we will be hunting again. Man, it's incredible, incredible experience uh, down here in Africa. So the farm that we moved to is actually an orange farm. A large portion of this farm is like a giant orange grove. And there's actually a water hole in the middle of the property where they dump a lot of the bad oranges. And that's where a lot of the animals are concentrated. And this farm is a lot more open. So we can see a lot better and we have the opportunity at a, at a further shot. All right, guys, we moved properties today. And, uh, we're going for Ginsbuck, Eland, Waterbuck. Got this a bunch of uh, warthogs. So here we go. Let's we'll go get on it. So, right off the bat on this property, we got into the mix of some golden wildebeest. And when I say there was a bunch of them, I mean there was a bunch of them. <laughs> the biggest problem was finding the right one to shoot in the right window. Yep, sure is. You could see it here, but not there, and then they would move, and then they'd get mixed up, and it was just all very confusing. We pretty much stayed in the truck the whole time, but getting a shot on one of these big bulls proved to be difficult. And eventually we actually gave them a rest and started moving down the road to look for Elon we actually ended up catching up with a, a nice group of kudu. Just gonna pause them, let them settle down a little bit. Uh, that's a very young one. Oh yeah, you can yes. see That one in the middle at the back is a wide one. Yeah. The Kudu Slayer. Kudu Slayer. <laughs> Man, I tell you, I'm excited. Number two Kudu. We tracked him, we spotted him over there, and we tried to beat him, they were running, so we got in the truck and drove around, and then cut him off, pretty much, is what we did. And uh, he stood there, facing straight at me, made a good shot, didn't go probably 100 yards, 150 yards. And man, Rye, thank you. You're Yet welcome. Again. Good job. Could do number two down. Let's go see what else we can get. Africa. Fighting scars and rings on the horns, yeah. No, ah, that's just a thing that the old people used to say uh, when a kudu bull runs away and they, you know, for the trees, they bend their horns back. They can look through that hole back at you or anything that's behind them. But I don't think a kudu can turn its eye that well you never know yeah I didn't say. you can see the eye so yeah yeah so we got everything taken care of with the kudu we had a blazer trail in there and the trackers got the kudu loaded up we got word that down by the water hole where all the oranges are dumped there was a zebra 
and JC had wanted a zebra. So we decided to head that way and try to get set up in a blind and hopefully that that zebra would come back and get a drink. Okay, we just stopped by and we saw a couple of eland and wildebeest and a zebra running away. So we quickly jumped into this little hide. Yep. Sit and wait and hopefully the zebra will come in. He's coming back. I have faith. I see some water bugs coming in now. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He was with them going that way. Hopefully he'll come in now. There's some there's some water dogs. Okay, okay. Look at all the baboons. Yeah, no more baboons. You got twenty about twenty some baboons. Some guys coming in. The zebra's coming in. Oh 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 big yawning. Reload, reload, reload. Keep your eye on him. Man, I, it's definitely one of my bucket lists. You know, I told my wife I wanted one. And, She'll love this rug. Yes, and that's what, when you told me there was one on the water, to get over there, I was like, okay, we're going. Thank you, Rye. I appreciate you're it. You're welcome, sir. And uh, man, it just worked out so easy. Just, I mean. Perfect. Riding around and saw him on the water, got in the little hut. He comes straight back. Super pumped. Good job. Thank you, sir. So the zebra was down and Rion and JC were over, you know, like admiring the animal. I'd actually left something over at the blind for my camera. So I went back to the blind to grab it. And on my way to the blind, I spotted a warthog come down to the water. I was about, I don't know, 100 yards away from Rion and JC, but I was able to get a hold of them with like, you know, <laughs> whistles <laughs> and point over to where the warthog was. And JC was able to lay on his belly and get a shot off on his first African warthog. He, he barely stood out of that tree. Good job. See, uh, warthogs, they call them war because the warts. Yeah. They have warthog, yeah. And then the male, the females, they don't have this one. They only have that one. I got you. There's no one, no on the females, it's nothing like that. It's just straight. It's like all their hair that wiry. That's, yeah, that's yeah. pretty weird looking. Yeah. Feel it, it's hard. Yeah. Oh, wow. Man, yeah. No, we were still standing there admiring the the zebra, and Brian went to fetch his tripod, and he and this water was wallowing in the mud. Yeah. yeah. John got flat on his stomach and took a perfect shot on him. Well done. So after that, we actually got back into the blind, and we sat for quite a while. We had a lot of different animals come in, uh, including some water buck. Uh, a lot of monkeys and baboons, warthogs. I mean, clearly this water hole and these oranges were a central point of this property. Animals were just coming in constantly throughout the time we sat there. And we actually had a large group of Cape Buffalo come in. And according to Rion, all these buffalo were not quite old enough, but man, it was incredible to be within 20 yards of these animals. Definitely JC was a little intimidated at times, but he managed to make it through and we ended up getting back in the vehicle and started covering some more ground before dark. JC wanted to get an eland in sight and ultimately we didn't see an eland that was big and mature enough. So we just continued to drive around and eventually we ran across some wildebeest. And Rian asked if I wanted to shoot it and it did not take me long to grab the gun and start heading that way following Rian.
So we, what we ended up doing, we seen the wildebeest and then we went out and we cut their track and then we continued to follow their track until we caught up with them. Unfortunately, we ran into some eland and they spooked. Whenever they spooked, they took the wildebeest with them. So the eland definitely threw a kink into our plans. Luckily, Rion spotted at least one nice bull in the group of wildebeest, and it was just a matter of getting through this thick brush and getting a shot. Very special. That's incredible. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Sir, thank <laughs> you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. Hey, we had a, it seemed like the evening were just trying to mess us up all yeah. night. And the Gims book. And the Gims book, yeah. Yeah, oh, this is a nice Look at this. Yeah. Tell me about that. Uh, yeah, you see, they have a lot of golden wildebeest, yeah. Right. And the normal blue wildebeest. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they interbreed. Yeah. And you get that nice brown. Right getting carried over in the jeans and it's yeah very good to shoot one unique to shoot one like that that's well i'm, I'm and he's got a huge spread on him huge spread yeah uh, you said that's a huge bull yeah <laughs> i huge couldn't bull. see his horns because there were branches in the way yeah. and i kneeled down and oof, i saw the spread on him perfect perfect <laughs> we're, we're okay. look at the lung blood coming yeah. up you ran like 70 yards yeah that's what you want right yeah yeah very uh, good the, job thank you sir i truly appreciate it look at the Welcome. main I mean, i'm just and just in the nick of time yeah the sun, the sun, the sun is going down <laughs> on another day we still got what five more six more days of hunting yes, so yes. we're plenty of stuff to do i've been behind the camera for the first this yeah. is our third or fourth day yeah. so uh, good job it's been a lot of fun that's what we like not a lot of tracking that's right it's a long way over there isn't it yeah. Well, I mean, I'm good Did y'all get in the blind? Hey, I saw your uh, wildebeest. Dude, that thing's yeah. fine. It's, like it's a, a piece of gold across its face. It's a hybrid. It's, 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 awesome it's, 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 it's wild. That's super it had cool. It has the golden and the black. I mean, How'd you talk him into shooting it with a gun? He said, look, there's wildebeest. And I said, hmm. And he said, I, 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 I'll, I'll shoot it. I didn't he say that. He wanted a wildebeest. I didn't so say that. Bad. No, I, there was wildebeest. I said, right. there's wildebeest. I said, do you want to go another? Another blue wildebeest, and he said no. And then Ryan looked at me, he goes, You yeah. want to go? Yeah. You wanna and then, go? what do you yeah. think I'm going to say? What? <laughs> okay, twist my arm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, what do you think about that sable? Dude, that's so awesome. Congrats. Oh, cool. yeah, I mean, that's it, it was cool. so awesome. We got some really you good need one, you know? footage, too. Yeah, I mean, the, not of the actual kill, that's but. What Gerard was saying. Beautiful, beautiful oh, big sable bull. Thank you so much. One of my top animals I finally got today. Uh, today's a special day. Uh, just an awesome animal. Uh, just such beauty. Um, we think he's, what, seven or eight years old. Uh, 43 inches, so definitely a trophy sable for sure. So I think JC's on, gonna try to get on a sable maybe tomorrow, but he's gonna have a hard time topping this with it. <laughs> Just, I think that's my favorite animal, the sable. I told you. That's you my really one or two, the kudu, and that is my one and two, and crocodile threes. Just close to a giant Ginsbuck. That's like what I did. Super like big. One second off and it was gone. The only place, the, the place where we went today has all males. We saw like six males, but they, I mean, they, they're very elusive. Probably the most elusive, like the baboons. They're like yeah. the baboons. Oh no, we had 120 of them in front of us today at baboons? five yards. Did you didn't kill one? No, I shot the zebra instead. But uh, he was like, you made the right call. Good. How was the day? Excellent. Excellent. Thank you, our dinner's ready. On the starter, we're having crumbed mushroom. Mm -hmm. Main course, stroganoff. Mm. From buffalo. Buffalo oh. stroganoff. Mm. Yes. Rice, sweet carrots, and salad. Mm. Thank you. 
Thank you, Kenny. Dear Lord, we want to thank you for, you for this wonderful day. Thank you for the wonderful animals we harvest today. Mm. Please bless the fruit to our bodies. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Well, Okay, this morning we slept in a little bit because we're going for crocodile. Wait for the sun to come up. We'll go and check the rifle and make sure it's perfectly on. And then around 8 o'clock we leave. Go and see if we can get a nice croc for John. So there's the brain. Yeah, yeah, the brain and two inches behind the smile. Okay. You can break the neck. So, depending on the angle we see it or so, I'll tell you which the owl net. Yeah, which one is the better one. Right, and it's lying facing us right between the eyes in the middle of that, like a scoop. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Sounds good. Right, let's go check the rifle and then we can okay. move on. <coughs> what do you think, Manny? I don't know, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> 338 Lapua. I started from 180 grain up to 280 grain. Alright, game on. Crocodile Dundee, here we go. One thing that I learned in South Africa is that these safari outfits, they share resources with each other. And in this particular case, we were going to go down the road just a little bit to a neighboring hunting outfit and hunt crocodiles. They had this real long and narrow water source. And the main tactic that we were gonna be using was to drive and walk up and down the edge of this water along these roads trying to catch these crocodiles out mid-morning warming up for the day. To say that this property was infested with crocodiles uh, is quite the understatement. I cannot put into words how many crocodiles we actually seen, but hundreds, absolutely hundreds. Yeah, you're in. Who is this one? Three in there now. Three. Okay, Three perfect. There. The closer and closer that we got to the water, the more and more you could feel the tension rising especially with JC. He's been looking forward to this hunt for a very long time. Frankly, for years. That was our first sighting of crocodiles. I'm excited. That was a bunch of crocs right there. That right there got my blood pumping a little bit. Not every day you see a hippo. So we continued to move up and down the bank and Rion would spot a good one, but it wasn't quite as good as he thought we can get on. And then we would have to try to sneak past it so we wouldn't spook all the crocs that might be around it. And one thing about it is you have to shoot these on the bank because if you shoot them in the water, they will sink. And good luck going out there and getting it. Here comes another 
Eventually, we got to a croc at a very close range that Rion said was a no-doubt shooter. Thank you, sir. Well done. Thank you. Oh, what a adrenaline rush right there. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Keeper. Thank you. Yeah, that's what I was just looking at. Look at them mitts. Man, just going in the living room. That's, that's my top three, man. I'm telling you, I'm so excited right now. I, I would be really excited if I'm too close to this water. And I don't, I'm like you. I don't want to be near it. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah we, we came here and we we tracking all around this lake. Saw a bunch of crocodiles. Tons. Tons. <laughs> Passed up a, a lot of them and then we found this guy lying here. I immediately knew when I saw the thickness of the, the teeth and the broadness of his head, the good one. You made a perfect shot. He didn't even move an inch. When you when you told me it was time to shoot and you gave me that little smile, you didn't even say, you just, <laughs> and I was already behind you. So I, I was ready to go. Thank you so much, Rye. Justice well Keppa, done. thank you, Keppa. Man, the trackers, I mean. Wow. All right, give us a smile. Well, it is day, day five, technically. Uh, it's been an incredible experience. About to pull out the old bow. I think we'll go hopefully go on our first bow hunt this evening. Definitely tomorrow. So uh, make sure everything's still dialed in. And uh, keep having time of our lives here in South Africa. So we got back to the lodge after the crocodile hunt. I pulled out the bow and started flinging some arrows just to make sure everything was good to go. I was excited that maybe we can get the blind that evening, but for sure we was gonna be bow hunting the next day. So we ended up not bow hunting that evening and this was the only hunt of the trip that I did not film. And so I didn't get any kills on film, but it was one of the best evenings we had all week. All good. I swear the animals keep getting prettier. I knew zero about the Niala, but uh, they gave us a run for our money today. Brian got a beautiful Niala. JC was finally able to catch up with the Gims buck. Brian got another great kudu. Look at that. How big is that? That's really big, right? Seems like Yeah, it. I passed him and I was like, he's too wide. I gotta, I gotta shoot him. I was like, he's the same size as mine. I think he's bigger. JC was able to get his Elan. Brian got him an Elan. And then JC even got a water buck. This was an off the charts, amazing day. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this uh, beautiful day and this beautiful place. Lord, we're so blessed to be here uh, with everybody here and all the people that are taking care of us. Uh, we just pray for uh, your Holy Spirit to grow in us each and every day. Uh, fill us with that spirit. And uh, just uh, so thankful for our time here at Africa. And, uh, be with us as we uh, finish up our trip. And most of all, thank you for your son, Jesus. And bless this food and our bodies in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. So it's freaking to the Thank you.
Okay, today the plan is me and you and John we're going out to a nice blind bow hunting only today and see what we can shoot. Some impala, maybe a gamesbuck, kudu. Yeah. Let's Perfect. see what the day brings. My first African bow hunt. Sitting over a water hole. When I think of African hunting, this is what I think of. Sitting over a water hole in a hide, as they call it. With archery equipment and a lot of arrows in hand. We got a lot of arrows. So I'm excited. We've been driving around this farm uh, multiple days this week. A lot of animals, including a lot of impala down here, gims buck, uh, kudu, I mean, just a plethora of wildlife. Uh, so hopefully these clouds go away, sun comes out, and uh, the animals start filling up this water hole, which is 20 yards from us. So hopefully we'll see y'all soon. It's happening. And then Paul right here, 55 yards on the hillside and some brush. Got another Impala with some kudos. Probably 150 yards. He's coming, he's coming around. So after a while, the animal started to filter back toward the water and this large group of Impala was one of them. Uh, there was several nice rams in the bunch and I'll be honest with you, I was not gonna be picky. I was just gonna shoot the first solid ram that would give me an opportunity. He's going down, he's going down. Yeah, he's down. He's down. He's down. He's down, buddy. He's down right there. That's my first. First and fall. Very good. That's the good of bargain. Hey, I appreciate it, sir. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. That's exhilarating. A lot of eyes. That is what you want to see. Coated, coated, coated. Right head's going to be ready to be sharpened and used again. Right. Oh, that's a good sight. Perfect. I like it. I broke my, broke my bow in. That is a beauty. Yeah, that's a, that shot will work. Yeah. One of the classic Plains game animals right there, ain't it? Yep. Oh. Made a good shot. Perfect shot. He ran maybe, what, 70, 80 yards? Quite maybe, right. yeah. Gosh, I couldn't be happier. Thank you, sir. Well done, man. Having a blast out here. Uh, been, been riding around, uh, spotting and stalking, you know, traveling distance in the, in the truck, filming John. Uh, and then- Today was the blind day. Yeah, today was the blind day. Today was gonna pull the bow yeah. out. There's still plenty. Back in the blind. That's right, plenty of daylight. And the sun has come out now perfectly. Yeah, it's getting warmer. Yep. How old do you think this bull or this ram is? Seven or eight years old. Well, I'm super grateful for the opportunity. So after we got the Impala taken care of, we made our way back to the blind and we actually ate lunch right there out of the blind. The goal for the day was to sit there as long as we could get as many opportunities as we could, and as many animals as we could. So the sun's getting hot, we're sitting there, you know, enjoying it all, and as time passes, we look up and there is a very large Gimsbuck bull at the edge of the opening staring our way. So Gimsbuck was definitely an animal that I was hoping to get an opportunity at. 
and this group started working toward the water. And unfortunately for us, one of the smaller ones got to about 30 yards from the blind and he didn't like something. We think that he got a swirl of wind and he turned and bolted. And when he did that, the rest of the group went with him. As the day progressed, we had more impala begin to filter out. And luckily for me, one of the first animals actually to the water was a nice ram. And with the quartering two shot, I was not gonna pass my opportunity to try to notch my second African animal with the bow. Grab that arrow right here first. Let's see it. Look at all the blood. Holy cow. Look at that. That arrow is absolutely coated. That Ozcut broadhead definitely worked. <laughs> My quartering tortoise let it eat, didn't we? And it did. Look at all that blood in the water. That is a good entry. That's a good, that's a good ram. That's a really good ram. Long, right here. Yeah, absolutely. Beautiful, beautiful, big ribs. Very good, okay. Well, we're gonna get back in the blind and help maybe Gimsbach or something else. Kudu. There's so much to do here. <laughs> Sandstone safaris. Africa's amazing. It's a bow hunter's dream. It really is. All day action. Action all day. All day. Okay. This is incredible. So we got the second Paula thing care of. We walked back to the blind, immediately turned around, and there was a diker heading toward the water hole. A diker is actually a small species of antelope, but this was a solid sized male and it was making its way within archery range, and I was not going to pass it up.
So we watched the doctor go down within about 100 yards of the blind. And we actually just decided to sit there instead of getting out and disturbing the area. And we just continued to hunt. As the sun started to dip down into the trees, we had another doctor come in that ultimately never gave us a shot. Uh, we had a variety of other animals that started to filter into the water. And the more you sit there, the more you see how important a water source like this is to the way of life, to the animals that are living out here. So right before last light, we looked up and we spotted some kudu filtering through the trees heading towards the opening. Now the first bull that stepped out was a nice bull, but it kind of had a lopsided set of horns. And Rion actually said that I should pass him. It just lays back. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Well, I had to ask if that was a hard no or not. So when this bull stepped out in the opening, I could tell the difference. And Rion was right the entire time. This was a very, very special animal. And actually there was a one about the same size as him, not as wide, but about the same size behind him and in the brush. Whichever one of the two big ones was gonna give me a shot first, that was gonna be the one that I was gonna draw back on. So coming into this hunt, a kudu was an absolute bucket list animal. I mean, an animal that I've dreamt about my entire life, uh, especially shooting one with a bow in South Africa. So having this opportunity in front of me was something pretty special. So these bulls hung out in the opening about 50 or 60 yards from the blind for what seemed like forever. Uh, they were just being cautious and taking it all in. And all we needed was for one of the younger kudu or honestly any animal to come into the water, calm things down, let everyone know everything's fine. And uh, that's eventually what happened. Good shot, good shot, dude. Oh, 
This is this incredible. Is incredible to monster. This is an incredible animal. It's like beautiful. How beautiful. tough he is. How big he is. Yes. He's a Dull. monster. I like those tips going out, tips eh? Going out. He's got ivory tips. Deep calls, everything. Very nice. Oh my gosh. Beautiful, beautiful cootie. Today was one of the most memorable. It was the most memorable day of bow hunting in my entire life. And this is it's great. And to, for you said you wanted him with a bow. I wanted a kudu with a bow. And yeah. I'm talking all time, like lifelong bucket list. A kudu with the bow. It's up there. I mean, it's, it's either one or two. You know, it's one yeah, of those. Yeah. An elk with a bow. It's right there. I told you I'll put you on one. You sure did. <laughs> one day, and we had carnage left behind us. Two yeah, impala, yeah, three, a diker, diker that which we, we, haven't we need to go yet. get. Yeah. And then this absolute. Monster. Monster of a kudu. Wow, I'm speechless, man. Kudu of a lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> I completely agree. It's, Tell me it's, about a kudu. It's uh, part of the spiral on animals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have the spiral. You see this ring that mm -hmm. uh, runs around the horn. Yeah. That's part of the spiral on the nyala, the kudu, mm -hmm. bushbuck, and the eland. Wow. That's what you get down in South Africa. When you go up, you get more of the spiral horn species. Yeah. But you got a dandy of a spiral horn. A dandy. I'm grateful. Grateful for the opportunity. Yeah. Grateful for the for being here with John, who was gracious enough to run the camera today yeah. for me. Because I've been running the camera for him all week. And uh, we've had an incredible week. I just had the most incredible day of bow hunting in my entire life. Two Impalas, a Diker, and a giant Kudu. This has been a literal dream of mine my entire life to bow hunt Kudu in Africa. And I can't, I mean, it was the most incredible, it was one of the most incredible experiences I've ever experienced in my hunting career. Oh, Brandon. Yes, sir. What a day. You can say that again. Tell me about the, the diker. So this is, uh, is this a good size male? Very or? nice male. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the, the dikers are like what I showed you the other day, the wildebeest mm -hmm. with the scent glands. Look, yeah. they've also oh, yeah. got a scent gland that they mark the area with, yeah. the territory. And they're very territorial, these little dikers. Right, so that's why we seen earlier that did one run see, off the other one. Did you one. see this one run off that other one? Yeah. Well done. Thank you, for sir. For a great this, day. This is the one of the, it has to be one of the highlights. It is a highlight of my bow hunting career. That's Period. Awesome. Period. Congratulations. I, I love bow hunting. I love hunting. I'm grateful to get to travel and do the things I do. And uh, today is, is, it's a special day. So that day, Brian was also sitting over a water hole and he had action all day from a variety of animals. 
including a couple of nice Impala that he was able to shoot with his rifle. Good job, Brian. Yeah, yeah. Just turn the head that side. Very nice in parlor. What's new is it? Impala. I like food. Very official. Would you like to swish it, sir? No, thanks. Just keep pouring. <laughs> This is one of our fine rare cap salves. 1822. Would any of y'all find young gentlemen like no, right. 1822. That's a good year. The spring was really, really, really moist. The Napa Valley fruitful grapes were plentiful that year. That was a couple of years ago, right? My great grandmother stepped on them with her feet to make these. <laughs> Okay, uh, today we're going to a different area, which is about an hour and a half, two hours drive from here. We're going to look for some red hartebeest, blessbuck, and if possible, waterbuck and a zebra. Sable. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and we'll do John Sable on the way there, we'll try and get that this morning, and see what the day brings further. Early morning stuff, let's go. All right, guys, so we're here. This morning going after a sable and uh, after we get the sable down, hopefully quick, uh, we're going to leave here and go meet up with Brian where we're going after red hearted beast and uh, blessed buck, um, zebra, who knows what else, you know, this is winding on down. We got about two days left and pretty much all of our tags are filled. So we're just trying to go after what we don't have and see what we can get. Yep, 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 yep. So not long into that morning drive, while we were looking for Sable, we ran across a big bull and we immediately jumped out of the truck and began to stop.
on the shoulder. Yeah, that's awesome. That's it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Look at that. And look at this spray at the back. Look at this. Holy moly. Huh? Wow. It's sticking up down there. Ah, oh, This is amazing. Came here, I had three really animals that I wanted. It was a kudu, a sable, which was one or two, and a crocodile. And this right here just finishes it off. And with a beautiful sable. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful sable, man. Yes. Around about 44, 45. Beautiful. Look at this. Our sable is one of our speciality animals, which is not that common, but they're part of the sable, the roan, those guys. Yeah, and uh, we just got a beautiful, beautiful bull here. Yeah. And the females have, like, see the color on the ear? Yeah. The brown color. The females stay, normally stay about the brown color. And the older the bulls get, they get this yes. black, the black color, color in the body, in the skin. You can see this one has already turned completely black. Yep. But it's an old bull. You can see the gray in the face. In the face, yeah. yeah. Oh wow. Very really old bull. So we got the sable loaded up. We started to head to the other ranch where Brian was. Brian who has already been hunting over there, had already tagged a really nice water buck. Hey, the beautiful water buck bull. Good job, Brian. Look at that. Man, this sucker gave us a run for our money. We hunted him all day, or hunted a, a water buck all day yesterday. He didn't see one. One of the top animals I wanted to kill here in South Africa. Congratulations, very really nice water buck bull. It's a good one, isn't it? Congratulations to you, brother. Now, from here, we all got in the same vehicle, and this was the start of one of the funnest days that I had in Africa, the bulk of which was riding around in the truck and shooting from the high rack. See, when the rams, they get older, the horns get white like this. Yeah, gotcha. They get white. You see that other one we saw next to the road, the female? It had black horns. They don't gotcha. turn white like this. Yeah, well done, John. Thank you so Very much. Good shot. Thank you so Big much, old man. Bull, nice bosses, nice and widespread. At one point in the day, we actually got caught up trying to get in front of some red hartebeest. And eventually we caught up to a group with some, with some nice bulls in it, and we were able to get out and get a nice stalk in for JC. So much, thank you so much. Yeah, when I saw the blood, I was like, my gosh. I was like, he ain't going far. 
Man. Beautiful, huh? <laughs> yes. We call them the Harley Davidson with the handles. <laughs> Beautiful. Wow. And they also have the, the scent gland. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Harley Davidson. Harley Davidson. Harley Davidson. I was actually able to jump in the high rack as well and chase zebra. That was one animal my wife, Brienne, asked me to try to get. So I was not going to leave Africa without at least attempting a zebra hunt. Which one? The other one. He's doing circles. He's, no, down. he's down. He's down. He's down. No, he's down. Good job, man. Yeah, I'm sure. Good job. Man. Good job. Man. Thank you. Okay, I can honestly say that I, I was not expecting to kill a zebra on this oh. adventure. Beautiful stallion. And what? look at the. Italian. Mm -hmm. They have a tooth there. Oh, a canine? That, yeah, where the mares don't have it. Why is that? They're fighting. Oh, that's what this scar right here is? The, the Italians normally yeah. have marks on the on the okay. skins for fighting. Okay. Yeah, they fight each other quite hard. Right. Very aggressive? Yeah, very. And this right here is a big, big stallion. Big stallion, yeah. It's very nice. Well, I'm super grateful to Made be here. Made a perfect shot on him. Yeah, he did not go far. And then if, if they give you a second shot, then you take it, right? Take it, yeah. So, brother, I Good appreciate job. it. Well Thank done. you, sir. Awesome. Well, we still got daylight left. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man. It's crazy. Crazy adventure. Today's been great. <laughs> Yesterday's been great. Yeah, the whole week's been great. And right before last light, we were able to get a stock on a big old red heart of beast with Brian. And I was able to get some really cool over the shoulder footage. in the nick of time. Whew. That's been a hard animal to kill. <laughs> Goodness. Good job. Right at the last. Yeah, look at that. Look at the sunset. Grass is fine. Look at that. I know one thing, there's a bunch of them on here, but yes. they are hard to kill. They were a big one. That was the biggest herd we've biggest we seen all day. Yes. It may have been like three separate. Yeah, I think they're bunched up. Because there were some there, there were some here, and there were some back there. But I, they were four, like four or five bulls together. And I saw them, and those came out. I said, no, no, leave the hooks, yeah. come this yeah. side. Yeah. But this one is going to, thank you. your memory is going to overcome everything past yeah. with this one. Yeah. That is a really cool animal. A dandy. Handlebars. Harley Davidson. Handlebar. The Harley <laughs> And, and you know what's nice about them when they're walking away in the bush 
when they're walking away in the bush, you can easily see them with this light yes, rum. Yes, that's the only thing that gives them away. Yeah? Thank goodness yeah. for that. Beautiful. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, but there, were, there were so many of them. Ja, maar het maakt een probleem. Ja. Ik heb ook een ICC. Ja. Ik heb een ICC. Ja. Ja. Ik heb een ICC. 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 Ja. Mm. What's that, Kenny? This is the roast, the roast? from Hemsbok. Mm. Mm. Yes. Today is the second to last day. Save the best for last. It's a uh, Officially Buffalo Day. Me and JC are going after Cape Buffalo. JC is going to put a spot and stalk on him and try to shoot him with a. He's going to shoot him with a gun. I was going to say something cool like he was going to shoot him with a spear or something. JC won't even, he's scared to get out of the truck. <laughs> Today's Buffalo Day. Get out there in the bush and get a buffalo or two. Well, we could hold out for the real big one in there. It may take two days. We sit the blind. You think? We come in at the one water or two days in a row. Kunra. Kunra, but maybe we'll get him. Yeah, yeah maybe we'll see him today. <laughs> so here on my backup gun, I have a 458 Express. We use it for backup on buffalo and elephant and lion or whatever. Shoots a 500 grain bullet at around about 2200 fruits per second, so it's a very good backup gun, especially on buffaloes. That's right. He's my backup guy. <laughs> he needs it. <laughs> <laughs> and we got a tag along today. Hi. Hi. You only come for the dangerous stuff. <laughs> hey, I'm the lucky charm. That's right. It's like one shot done. <laughs> people like about buffalo, like what, what is it about buffalo? I think it's the adrenaline, the rush, hunting the black death. <clears throat> so hopefully everything goes well today. We'll see. Shoot, reload, shoot again. But if he's in the bunch, shoot. Oh, Wait, I'll... Okay, you've got one soft nose at the top, and then the rest are solids. Okay. The tension on this hunt was on a different level, even compared to the croc hunt. Everyone was on high alert. We were trying to peer into the shadows. We were all trying to catch a, a glimpse of a big buffalo. Uh, we uh, was hearing the ox pecker, and the ox pecker bird, they are normally with the buffaloes. I hear them flying. Maybe the buffaloes are close here. Yes, 
Yes. So after that close call, we drove around all day with almost no sightings in this thick brush. And right toward the end of the day, we ran across a group of bulls. Now, it was just a matter of whether there was a shooter or not. Does he think he's hiding behind that twig? Close. Goodness gracious, look at that thing. We saw a bunch of bulls there, but so thick we couldn't tell, but we could see there's a big bull there. We just want to meander around, let them get out of that thick, thick, thick area there. So we'll just check around and come back a little bit later. It's more open to the right hand side there. Good job. Thanks, bro. Oh my gosh. Look at this giant yeah. Oh man. One shot. Well done. Oh, man. Good Thanks, job. Brother. Good job. Thank you. Holy crap. Man, this is absolutely the largest animal I've ever killed. I could not be more happy. I am so thankful for Sandstone Safaris for getting us out here, man. I tell you, big one of the big five. My first of the big five down. Man. It took all day. It's a long ingress. Tough hunt. Well, you can see losing his hair, old bull, seven, ten years old, twelve years old. Look at the bosses, hard, oh, nice. So that's called a boss? Yeah. Now, say, what's different with the boss and like on this older bull than a 
Young. Younger bull, they, they're not hard here, yeah. they're soft up here, yeah, like they're soft, gotcha. but listen, listen to that. Hard. Got a nice drop, nice width on him. Everything. I got a little nervous, I was, I was kind of shaky after. Oh, I was like, man, I, told, I looked at BA and I said, that was a good shot. I was like, I know I was on there, it was sturdy. Man. Good job. Thank you, thank you, I can, so blessed. That's unbelievable. Your turn tomorrow. We're riding out tonight. Nice. Congratulations. Thanks, nice, brother. Beautiful animal. Look at him coming out of you. Oh, it's ginormous. It's crazy. This is like absolutely insane. Mandy's going to have to uh, open up her living room now. Got me. That's going in the den. No, it's not. Yeah, it's gonna uh -huh. be right, right above the fireplace. Good job, babe. Thank you. Yeah, so Glad you. Hey, look, you're my lucky, my lucky charm right here. Every time she goes out with me, we kill. Every time, lucky charm. I'm so, I'm so excited. Right. Hi, Henry. Oh, one done and that is one to go. That's it. Don't call me. What are we doing today? Go on boat hunt, go sit in the blind and uh Shoot a couple of things last day, last morning hunt. I think we're gonna be done by 11, 12. Here at Sandstone, this trip has been amazing. I've met great friends and I actually had the hunting trip of my lifetime. Everybody needs to come here because the amount of animals that are here, pretty good stuff. I mean, I cannot tell you how thankful it's for I'm great this was to do. We were sitting over the same water hole that we had hunted a few days before with me. And just like a few days before, the animals began to filter in. It didn't take long. We had a really nice young kudu bull come in to get a drink. Uh, not quite a shooter, but still it was awesome to see him that close and experience, a, you know, an animal of that size, you know, at that distance. Now what that young bull did do was give the all clear sign to the Impala that the coast was clear and eventually a nice ram started working within archer range. Man, this right here is my first bow kill in Africa. And I can't be more excited, you know. He come walking in, never got around the water, so we got about 30 yards. Well, this is it for me in Africa. Justice, thank you so much, man. It's, uh, it's time to go home and back to the lodge, get everything done. We've got to do on our end and wrap it up. 
Go watch uh, Brian try to get his Cape Buffalo. And that's exactly what we did. We got the Impala taken care of and I jumped in with Brian and we began looking for Buffalo. So we ended up covering ground all day in the back of this truck looking for a bull. And the thing is with this terrain is, the, is that the vegetation is like super thick and you really can't see that well in there. And plus these animals are black and so they blend in very well with the shadows. And when you do get a glimpse, they're very spooky and are gone in like a second as soon as you see them. We did end up having a couple of close encounters with some younger bulls, uh, including actually sitting up in a blind right there at last light and having a really nice young bull walk out in front of us, but it wasn't the bull that Brian was after. Brian was actually after a giant world-class animal and it was gonna take a pretty special bull for him to pull the trigger. So we closed that day with no kill. And so we woke up the next morning, the morning we had to leave, hours before we had to leave, Brian attempts one last hunt on Buffalo. And luckily, thanks to a sighting from the trackers, it didn't take long for us to get on a stop. Okay, the trackers spotted a big Buffalo up here. We're just gonna hop off the truck, see if we can find the tracks, see if we can get a shot on him. Make it work. Can you load it up? Yes. Okay. Good job. It's going, look, look. Oh, it's going, it's going. Look like a good shot. Look like a good shot. I saw the ripple. Did you yeah, see I the saw ripple? the ripple on the chest. Good job. Well done. Let's just make sure he's dead. <laughs> Good job. Well done. Oh man. <laughs> That's a big buffalo. Good job. That's a big buffalo. That's a 44, 45 inch buffalo. Good job. Well done. Yeah. Good job. Yes. Looking for this guy for a long time. 
finally did it. So we got it done. We got it done. This is what dreams are made of. Eh? This Look is, at this, this is a dream beautiful board. buffalo. Got it done. The last morning. Last morning. We we actually get on a plane today, headed home. We've been here for what, nine days. Yeah, this is the ninth day. And we have killed every animal, top end animals on every species that we hunted. And you topped and, uh, it off with a beautiful buffalo. Uh, so we're in South Africa uh, with sandstone safaris, which has been a trip of a lifetime to say the least. Um, we, I mean, the accommodations, the food, the, just everything, the people, is just first class operation. This one bull, several people have actually come to hunt this one bull and not had any success. Uh, a lot of big bulls here. Uh, I was I was totally cool with taking any big bull, but um, I'm just very blessed to you know to take an animal of this size. Um, I don't know if I'll ever get another big a bigger buffalo than this. I mean, it's possible, but I think you you rounded it off now with a amazingly big buffalo, beautiful buffalo, nice drop, big bosses. Yeah, all went well. Yeah. Yeah. Good job, Brian. Thank you very well much, done. Brian. I'll never forget it. I don't think I deserve a, an animal quite this good. <laughs> the lucky man. Yeah, I'm a lucky man. <laughs> very lucky. Well done. Thank you, Gerard, and the whole team. Uh, we'll definitely be back. I hope so. Yes, hope to see you we soon. Will. We will. Much fun this week. I enjoyed it thorough, thoroughly. It's yeah, unreal. Beautiful place. I had more fun than I've ever had in my life. This is like a redneck oh. haven right here. I was expecting um, five animals, and uh, I'm leaving with 18. Phenomenal. Sandstone safaris knocked it out of the park. I mean, it, the whole team here, it couldn't be better. Me, BA, Brian. Just absolutely had the best time of our life. Just the overall experience, I mean, just, it couldn't be any better. It is hard to put all the right adjectives to describe how joyous this trip was to me. The camaraderie that was shared between old and new friends, the sites and locations that you never really quite expect to see in your lifetime. Now, the biggest downfall of this entire trip was we were not allowed to bring the meat home. Now, don't get me wrong, we enjoyed the spoils of the hunt while we were over there, and we did eat well. Uh, the meat did not go to waste. Every shred, every bit of it was used and dispersed uh, throughout the community, uh, as well as the people that worked there at Sandstone. The buffalo. The buffalo. Cheers. Hey, the buffalo. Cheers. 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 I'm just grateful, and I'm counting down the days until I can return.